it's Women's History Month, and I want to I want to talk about um, a woman who made history, who I was honored to call a friend when we were young and starting out our careers, Wendy Wasserstein. She was a Pulitzer winning playwright, and she was the first woman playwright ever to win a Tony. Um, but we were friends when we were both striving. And I have some wonderful letters from her. This is one that I Xeroxed. Um, it, the stationery is uh, the Yale Club, 50 Vanderbilt Avenue, 44th Street, New York, New York. My dearest Mimi, I feel as if I'm sitting in the green room for the cast of Bachelor Uncle. We used to joke about a play called Bachelor Uncle based on a TV show called Bachelor Father, but we just thought Bachelor Uncle would be a fun show. But she says, really, it's all men here for the cocktail hour, three or four scattered blonde women with tortoise barrettes at both sides of their hair. <laughs> I'm still wearing a tortoise barrette in my hair. Um, and shrimp earrings. Were those earrings named after Jean Shrimpton or the crustaceans and me? So I won't tarnish my reputation and look like a hard drinking woman writer. I am sitting alone at the desk in the corner, a sensitive young girl with a polite drink, writing to a dear friend. I met Wendy because she knew some men that I knew from Amherst, Amherst graduates. I married one, my husband, and she had uh, choreographed. She, her mother had been a June Taylor dancer. So Wendy loved, you know, her mother always wanted her to dance and Wendy knew choreography. So she had choreographed Peter Pan at Amherst. And then she knew a lot of people in theater at Amherst and so did I. And we met uh, doing Jim Steinman's play, the rock musical of Das Rheingold at the Mercer Arts Center in downtown Manhattan. Uh, Wendy was the choreographer, but I, I think she and I had met before then, maybe not. She and my friend David Rimmer had taken a playwriting class with Israel Horowitz at the time. Uh, and that was even before she then went to Yale Drama School, which is where she really met the crowd with whom she would go on to, um, to have a great career on and off Broadway. Um, and we just, we hit it off immediately. And <laughs> she was the friend that I could say anything to about striving to be an actress. I remember Kurt Dempster, my wonderful acting teacher, you know, it was the exploration of our real feelings and our emotional memory and doing the word game. And I remember I said to Wendy, I don't know if I can do this. Sometimes I just feel like telling Kurt, my real feelings end here. She, she would always quote that back to me, my real feelings end here. But uh, as you can see, she, she had a theatrical sense of herself from the outside. I will look like a polite young woman with a polite drink, studious at the desk at the Yale Club. <laughs> this is from Wendy in uh, about probably 1983, March, it looks like. Uh, Mimi, I haven't seen you in so long. Other than working very hard this fall, not much is really new. I think I'm a little happier, but that could be temporary. The past year was pretty difficult professionally, not much work and a bit of a reputation. So I guess I thought I had to take things into my own hands and go back to why I started doing this to begin with. I imagine this is when people were calling her play and trying to make deals. And on the personal front, I seem to be past the previous obsessions, thank goodness. And I love my friends. I haven't really been involved with anyone in a while and sometimes that worries me and sometimes I think when it happens, it will happen. I would very much like to have a child, but I don't see it in the immediate future, but who knows? I know I would really miss not having one because I do think the fundamental things do apply as time goes by and the other things are important, but not as consistent. She and I used to make a joke about Debbie Boone was uh, at that time out uh, with uh, You Light Up My Life. 
you know, and Pat Boone was her dad. He was a good Christian man and they were all so wonderful, the Boone sisters. So we used to say that we were Boone sisters because we didn't want to hurt anybody. Um, she has a line in, in one of her uh, shows, Uncommon Women, in which one of the characters says, it's debilitating seeing things from everybody's point of view. But she did, and I did. And we used to share that. And we said we were boon sisters. We were, you know, perfect girls, she, she goes. So basically when I read your letter, I feel we're still boon sisters, still wanting to do the right thing, still having to pump up the energy, still thinking you have to see this from a comic of point of view, because that is the most humane. There were a couple of letters, you know, my dearest Mimala, I was so pleased to receive the latest edition, yes, of a, a letter I wrote. Of course, I've now worked enough with Bert Sugarman, Jack Lemon, Claire Nichter, and CBS television to know these things come and go. Yeah. Sometimes I fantasize about making preserves in East Hampton and having my friend come out on the weekends and living some sort of alternative Bloomsbury life, sort of calm and lovely. And other times I fantasize about getting back at the Schubert organizations of the world and getting a play on Broadway. I don't know, must have been around 1982. There is talk about an LA production of isn't it romantic and someone from Warner's is interested in a movie deal and so we can breakfast at Schwab's and be rediscovered. Wendy Wasserstein, brilliant and my friend. <laughs> 